Hello, I'm Richard Bertinet and welcome to my kitchen, the Bertinet kitchen. It's Christmas. Guess what? I hate mince pie. Well, not anymore. But when I first arrived in England, Chris, uh, Christmas was always mince pie in England. And the mince pie, I never got it. I never understood mince pie. There was too much pastry, too much toppings, too much filling, too sweet. I could never understand the mince meat concept. So I've learned over time to develop my own recipe for mince pie. And now you're in for absolute treat. You're going to fall in love with this one, like I did when I first created this, uh, this recipe for you. So I hope you enjoy it. Follow me, we're going to make some now. So before we make our mince pie, I'm going to show you how to make pastry. And the sweet pastry I'm using now is not a new recipe I've created. It's a recipe I've been using since about the age of about 16, when I was in France as an apprentice. I use that sweet pastry for so many different things. So the first thing we got, we got our flour, our butter, we got eggs, we got our sugar, an orange, and a bit of salt. And the first thing I'm going to do before I start working is to get all my ingredients ready, which means I'm going to separate my eggs now. So I need two whole eggs, and one egg yolk. So our eggs are ready, our flour is ready. And I'll add a tiny pinch of sea salt in here. Just a tiny bit, about five grams of salt. I love that flavor of uh, slightly sea salty flavor in pastry. So just a tiny bit. The next thing I'm going to do is to zest a tiny bit of good orange, so unwaxed oranges, into my flour. You can perfume your pastry with anything, but for Christmas I always think orange is like such a present we used to have when we were kids. So I love the flavor of orange at Christmas. So I'm going to use a lot of orange today. So a bit of zest in there. So use a microplane or a little fine grater, about half an orange zest into my pastry. That should be plenty there. And mix all these together. Use your fingers, it's fine. So next thing is the butter. Now your butter, you want it to be very, very cold. If your butter is too, too hot, too soft, you have a very sticky pastry. So anyway, I got some butter straight from the fridge, which is really, really hard. And with a rolling pin, you bash it. So it's a bit nosy, but hey. So what's happened now, your butter is really cold, but it's soft, which we can work with this straight away. Okay, now we need to rub our butter into our flour. Now I say rubbing, but actually what I'm going to do is make it flecked inside. So the way I'm going to show you is you bring your butter like this, make sure it's covered in flour. You put your hand underneath like this, and like a little pack of card, you push it into the flour like little flakes. One of the things I find when I teach people how to make pastry, they always overdo it at that stage. They end up making the butter and the flour become a very fine break, break crumb. The problem when you do this, by the time you add your sugar and your eggs, it becomes very sticky, okay? Don't chase it like this. That's what I call faffing. We don't faff. So little flake of butter, that's perfect. And don't overdo it. You see that? Don't worry about little lumps of butter. That's absolutely fine. We still got all our sugar to go in and all the eggs. It will come together. I'm going to show you. Slightly underdo it just to prove the point. You can see that it's not perfectly fine, but that's good. Now it's time for the sugar. The sugar actually break down the butter and the flour. And again, with your finger, just blend it together. Don't overdo it. And it's all coming together nicely now. Nice and dry. Now we're ready for the eggs. Two whole eggs and one egg yolk. So for this, I'm going to use one of my favorite tools in the bakery or in the cooking school, my little scraper. And I'm going to blend everything together. See, what you don't want to do is put your hand in there and squeeze everything. That's where it becomes sticky and then we start to panic. It looks a bit dry to start with, but don't worry, it's normal. You take a bit of time for the fat from the butter and from the eggs to get into the flour and amalgamate together. So be patient, work it hard, work it into the bowl until it gets together. So the dough is all together now, but we need to work it together a bit. So it's all one smooth, beautiful dough. Now, it'd be tempting to use your hand and squash everything else. What I want you to do when you do this, when I teach people, there's always a top and bottom in your dough. And this one is the same. So put your thumb this way, one foot forward, one back, and you push with your thumb and roll it towards you. Just like this. So you got a nice method. And that's your top, and that's your bottom in here. 
by using the same method all the time, you can see the marbling start to change and become one. A bit of sticky dough, you bring it with your scraper, but you don't add flour. We always think when you start to stick, we put flour, that's the first reflex. But if you put flour now, your paste will become very hard. And when you roll it, you will crack everywhere. So learn to understand the recipe, work with it, and use a scraper instead of flour. So be patient, it will come together. Here we go. It's all mixed together nicely. We need to rest the pastry. Now very often you read, you got to wrap it in clean film and then put this in your, in your, in your fridge to rest. The problem with this is a big lump of pastry, very cold, wrapping clean film gets sweaty and then you have to roll it thin. If you buy your pastry ready made, it never comes in clean film, always in greaseproof paper or some kind of uh, breathable paper and always flat. So why do we teach people to do that? I don't understand. So I'll show you my trick on this one. So first, now we put a tiny bit of flour, like this. Then a tiny bit of flour on top, not too much. This flour is not going to be inside the pastry, it's just for the outside. And then we're going to keep doing a very gentle pre-roll to my pastry. Just keep it square. So you look nice and tidy. That's all you need to do for that. And then we get some greaseproof paper. Just there. Put my pastry inside. And then it's Christmas, so you're going to wrap it properly. Like this. So this pastry is so simple, the hardest thing is to wrap it properly. So <laughs> put your paper like so. Fold, fold. And look at this. Wrap there. How beautiful that is. Okay, and that's going to rest in the fridge now. And while it's resting in the fridge, we're going to keep busy making our frangipane, also known as almond cream or crème d'amande in French. We need some butter, some sugar, caster sugar, grand almond, some flour, and some eggs and then a little je ne sais quoi for later. And the reason I put everything in the right order is to make the perfect frangipane or almond cream, you need to follow the rules. Otherwise, you end up with something very heavy and dense. And you want the frangipane to be very light, so it's not overpowering when you eat it. So we've got some unsalted butter in here. And the first thing I do is just, it's been out of the fridge for a bit, so it's quite nice and soft already. And then, so I'm doing it by hand. It's much easier with a mixer, with a paddle, but you can absolutely do this by hand too. So we put all our butter into a bowl and then we cream the butter. What I mean by creaming the butter is I spread the butter around the bowl and really beat it up. So it's changed color slightly, become whiter and lighter. And before you add your sugar, make sure your butter is forming little peaks on it. So just little, little, little mountain of butter on the top. So I know it's soft enough and we're ready for our sugar. So again, the trick there, don't put all the sugar at once. We're gonna put just half of the sugar and give it a good beating. It's much easier to do one half, well mixed, and then put the other half. And it will work to a treat. When I was in France, this cream was my favorite by Mars. It's one of the basic cream we used to make in a pastry, and I used to go with my fingers and lick it all the time. I couldn't help it. And again, it's the same recipe. I haven't changed anything. So at that stage, we're going to add our almond. So we put half of the almond. Mix it well. And the rest of my almond goes in. Now, that's well mixed together. You can see this, solid one, beautiful. Good, so next, the flour. The flour can go all at once, it's fine, it's not too much. And work it well. So that's all banded together with the flour. And I'm gonna loosen it up with eggs. So I'm gonna put the eggs one at a time. So mix it well. Beautiful color, look at this. And then the rest of my eggs. The smell and the color make me see of Christmas already. 
So the perfect tex texture of the almond cream is when it's holding nicely. It doesn't drip, it's holding. So I know I can pipe this and that's going to be beautiful on my mince pie. The last little um, pièce de résistance, as we say, is to give some flavor to this. You could use rum. Rum would work for everything, but we're going to think about Christmas, so we're going to put a bit of an orange liqueur into it. So for this mince pie with the orange flavor, it goes perfect. I can't resist. I know it's bad, but I'm going to wash my hand after. Mm. Perfect. So that's going to go in your fridge now. With me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, the mincemeat. What the hell is mincemeat? <laughs> so, so they used to use beef suet in the old days. Um, I, for years I called it beef sweat, which I, I've been told is not right. Beef suet, it's two different words. Otherwise known as sweaty beef, but it's quite funny. But now we use, of course, we use some vegetable suet. I get it right. Um, uh, to bind everything together so everybody can eat it. Uh, but it was not a vegetarian dish before. So let me take you through my mincemeat. I got some apple from my garden, which you baked whole with the skin in the oven. We got some nice oranges. We use the skin and we use all the juice for that. Some cinnamon. We got some ginger, a grand ginger, vegetable sweat, some currants, some sultanas. We got some whole almond that we crushed. So you'll be a, a crunch into your mincemeat. I got some mixed peel to go with it and some dark brown sugar. Alcohol, I got some brandy and also some orange liqueur. And basically you put everything together, stir it very well, put it in a jar and forget about it until next year. And the good trick with, um, with this is buy your fruit in January. Everything is always cheaper. You can buy your fruit, all the Christmassy stuff, much cheaper at that time of the year. Make your mincemeat there in jar. It will last for two or three years if you want to. If not, you can always buy some good luxury a jar of mincemeat that will do too. But the whole recipe and method for the mincemeat is attached with your course knot. Make your mincemeat at least once, try it. It's quite different from the one you can buy. So the combination of now of our sweet pastry, almond cream, and that mincemeat inside is gonna be absolutely delicious. Let's make some mince pie. So I'm gonna use this little mince pie tray. They're beautiful. Not too deep, so just small enough to want another one, but not too much you feel sick. So I got some uh, tiny bit of butter on the baking parchment and just give it a good... You can use some spray, you can use anything. The butter caramelizes the pastry a bit, so it's quite... a little bit more flavor. And it's Christmas, so who doesn't love butter? Et voila. Okay, so my pastry is out of the fridge. That Christmas already, look, you can see now it's really, really cold. That's what I want. Don't want to roll too much pastry in one, pastry in one go. So I'm gonna cut this in half. Keep this wrapped. And then my pastry, what I'm gonna do is just soft it up a little bit. I'm gonna dust my table a tiny bit. And then just get my pastry rolled up. So this rolling pin in here is called French tepid rolling pin. They're really very light, but very, very powerful. So by moving your body, then move your arms, you get a much lighter touch. And keep the pastry moving. Don't let it stick and very fine dust in your flour. Try also not to get the rolling pin to go outside like this. Leave your rolling pin inside the dough, like this. So you want your pastry to be thin enough, so it's not too chewy. You don't want thick pastry, you want a nice combination, the right balance between your pastry, your almond cream, and also your filling. So it's like one third of each, really. I can just see the table through the pastry, so I know I'm nearly there. If you want to move the pastry when you get bigger, you can just roll it around like so. So you get three hands, put a tiny bit of flour. And the pastry is gliding nicely. And use your fingers to feel the thickness. You can really feel, so that's ready to be cut now. So I use a little cutter and cut. 
my disk. Here we go. And then place your pastry inside the mold. You don't have to press hard, just place them in the middle. So you could do this in advance and put them in the freezer like that. So you don't have to do it on the day. You can always be prepared. Okay, time to fill up our uh, pastry with a little beautiful mince meat. So about eight to 10 grams on each one. So I just put my finger in there. You don't want to overfill it. Think of it as a little treat. So now it's time to pipe our almond cream onto the top of our pastry and our mincemeat. So I use the piping bag, I find it much easier. You could use a spoon, of course, but uh, it's a bit neater with the, with the piping bag, so. For me, my mince pie is about different sensation when you eat it. We got our sweet pastry, our mincemeat, and our almond cream on top. Now to get a bit of crunch, I'm gonna put some flecked almond on top. So I'm putting quite a lot of almond on top, but you see when they're baked, it won't look as much. But you need, it's a treat, it's Christmas. You need that sensation in your mouth when you eat it. It's gonna be beautiful. Don't skimp on the almond. Et voila. So now we're ready for the oven. My oven's been preheated at 190, and they take about, depending on your oven, so be careful, about 16 to 18 minutes in your oven. Et voilà, look at this. Nice and golden brown, lightly baked on the leaf, perfect. So, we're gonna take off the molds. I'm gonna place them on the cooling rack. So I'm gonna show you the way I'm gonna serve these this Christmas. When they cool, I'm gonna dust them with a very fine icing sugar on the top. Okay, for the final touch of my Christmas mince pie this year, I'm gonna put a tiny bit, tiny bit of orange zest. Those oranges have been uh, stripped and also we put them in a bit of sugar syrup until they crystallize and then we cool them down and they just give you that nice crunch on the top and a beautiful, beautiful zesty orangey flavor. So there you are, my beautiful, gorgeous, perfect mince pie. All you need now is some champagne. And the final touch, you can always spray a tiny bit of gold dust on top. And this will bring your magic to your Christmas. So I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I just want to wish you a very, very happy Christmas. Enjoy your Noël. Parfait.